So it's a pleasure to welcome Mohamed Abu Zaid from Colombia, who will be speaking on Foucault categories, a very generic title. Thank you, Denis. Um, yes, so it was indeed a very generic title. Um, uh, so I'm going to talk about some uh, joint work um, in progress uh, with uh, Yoel Groman and uh, Umut Varol Ganesh. So this work was mostly done um, the pre-COVID summer, so in, in, in summer 2019, or rather, you know, in summer 2019, kind of, we figured out what the general picture should be. And uh, our goal is to write up uh, these results, but this is going to take a while. And part of the reason this is going to take a while is that we decided that the first thing we should write up is some open closed, uh, some, some closed sector story. Um, but well, anyway, but I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the open sector and uh, the interaction between the two. Um, so again, when I mention a result and I put you know my name on it in this collaboration, you should basically imagine that you know we have all the pictures drawn and you know all the um, algebra looks right. Uh, but at some point, somebody needs to do some work uh, with virtual uh, fundamental chains and stuff like that. And uh, in our you know in our collaboration, that means I am supposed to do the work with virtual fundamental chains. And uh, you know, well, I I um, I plead COVID for all delays. So, uh, so let me now zoom out. So, what's the setup of Fukai categories? So, what I want to start with is uh, to remind everyone that the output of Lagrangian Fleur theory, if you're working on a general closed symplectic manifold, is a curved, filtered A infinity category. So, you know, you assign to every pair of Lagrangian a graded vector space, and um, and then some operations. And uh, those operations, you know, you would like to say that there is some differential and some product and some higher product, but unfortunately, before before the uh, before you even get to the before you even get to the product to the differential, there is this operation mu zero, and this op operation mu zero obstructs the fact that new one, that new one is a differential. Okay? So we're working in some world where somehow, you know. Things are not very good. You cannot take homology. You cannot, uh, you know, it's it's not clear that you have any invariant, and, and, and nonetheless, somehow this is what Fleur theory gives you. Now, what Fukai Ono uh, realized in uh, 2000, well, uh, certainly before 2001, but anyway, um, at the beginning of this century, is that the way you extract um, kind of meaningful information from this, or a way to to extract. Uh, meaningful information from this is to uh, choose, if one exists, a bounding cochain. So a bounding cochain, I mean, the way I wrote it here informally is that you should think of it as some deformation of A, which has the property that now d squared equals zero. And now d squared is, again, this kind of, this is mu one, okay? But what it is, the way it's formally defined, is that simply it's an element uh, of the odd cochains. Let me just put odd, and we can do degree one, if you're interested in grading, it's an element of the odd cochain satisfying a certain equation. Now, um, there is something slightly unsatisfactory um, with, with doing this. And the main reason that the kind of, you know, from the point of view maybe of this conference, that the main, the main unsatisfactory thing about it is that if you start with some symplectic manifold with a Lagrangian, and the Lagrangian, for example, kind of generates the Fukai categories, kind of well-behaved object. Uh, but what that means, that means that the Lagrangian has a bounding cochain on it, uh, which generates. And now you deform a little bit, and it may be that that Lagrangian anymore doesn't admit a bounding cochain in this in this sense. You know, of course, that can happen, and there's sometimes there's nothing you can prevent you can do to prevent that because the Fukai category can just you know pop out of existence and become entirely zero. But sometimes the Fukai category doesn't do that, and it remains nice and well-behaved. Uh, and yet, this specific object that you picked, uh, which used to be in as generator, fails to be. So, so the, 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 the perspective that, I'm, that I want to take is that this notion of bounding cochain is just too rigid. And we want something that's kind of um, more flexible, that's kind of more adaptable to other situations. Now, of course, in reality, the, what really happened when you know that kind of the, the real motivation behind uh, this formulation, this reformulation, this generalization that I'm about to give, is is part three of the talk. Is when you know we were thinking about local Fukai categories, and we basically realized that you know it became more and more intractable to write formulas 
for what you want to do with local Fukai categories, and so you needed something more conceptual. And so this is kind of the more conceptual approach. Okay, so now I'm going to continue with the talk, and I am, uh, you know, moving the slides, so I'm right here. So you, if you take any curved filtered A infinity category, what you can do, what you can associate to it is a category of filtered left modules. So maybe I should put some kind of, you know, a symbol to indicate that we're looking at filtrations, filtered one, but I will call that mod of A. And, um, you know, these are, this is an ordinary category, meaning a DG category, if you set it up, differential grade category, if you set it up that way. Uh, and then one way to say this is that they are, there, there's some kind of modules where it, the curvature disappears when you act on the modules. So that, that's the, the way that I think, the way that I think about it. A absorbs all the, all the curvature and the module has no curvature left. And so when you try to take homes between them, uh, you get something which is, uh, which is just a chain complex. Now, the issue is that if you take an ordinary algebra, it's easy to produce modules. Okay? You can, you know, the algebra itself is a, is a free module over itself, and then you can try to use that and start to construct things from that. But if you take in the curved setting, you know, this category may just be empty, you just, or empty means that the only thing that exists is a zero module. And so, you know, uh, so the, 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 the notions that I'm going to talk about in the next slide may in general be, uh, may, may be talking about the zero notion for, for, again, for a specific given curve filtered infinity category. But on the other hand, what I'm trying to say is that for the ones that we care about, the ones that would arise in Lagrangian Fleur theory in, this situ in a given situation, for example, if you have a Lagrangian which you expect to kind of um, detect a lot of information about the Fukai category, then this is not going to be the case. And then these modules are going to be, this category of module is going to be a good place to work. So, okay, so the category has a category, so A has a category of, of, of left modules, and it also has a well-behaved object, which is the diagonal bimodule. So any curved A infinity algebra. So unlike the fact, so as I just said, like the curved A infinity algebra does not have a canonical module that you can associate to it, but you can always associate a canonical bimodule. And the rough idea is that, you know, a bimodule involves multiplication on the left and multiplication on the right. So uh, let me just draw something here. So you have this element here and you're gonna act on it on the left and you're gonna act on it on the right. And again, the curvature, all takes place either to on the left or on the right, and it need not it need not take place here. So all the formulas that you're used to, all the notions that you are used to, still make sense. And this diagonal bimodule, you know, the category of bimodules, is as good as the category of bimodules over an ordinary algebra. And in particular, there is this diagonal bimodule exists, and you can say things like this diagonal bimodule kind of represents the identity functor, um, and things like that. Okay, so now uh, to introduce this uh, kind of notion, this, uh, this thing that's supposed to explain what bounding cochains are, what I need to do is I need to talk about duality. So we have left modules, but there's also right modules, which are exactly the same notion, except you act on the right instead of acting on the left. And there is a duality between these two categories. And this duality is simply realized by um, taking, oops, let me get my mistake, taking uh, morphisms from, uh, from your left module to the diagonal uh, bimodule. And the, the way, again, the way that I think about this is that the diagonal bimodule has two actions, one on the left and uh, one on the right. And what you're going to do is you're going to pair the left action on M with the left action on A using, on the diagonal bimodule using this category, using this, uh, that's what this A is referring to. And you have a free, uh, free kind of uh, variable left, a free place that you can act on, and this is this a blue part, and here kind of A acts. Okay, so this is the, the, the dual of a left module. Of course, there's another dual, which is the linear dual, but this is, but this, this dual here is the one that is relevant for, um, for notions of like smoothness of categories and things like that, or Calabianus and such notions. This is kind of the kind of duality that shows up there if you're familiar with the story. So now comes the, oh, and there's one more thing to say, which is that this, uh, if, M, um, if M was filtered, then this right module is again filtered. So I should have put that here. Good. And now there's something you can do with modules 
uh, to go back to, to vector spaces, which is you can tensor them with each other. You can't tensor a left module and a left module. That's not possible. You can just take home. But if you take a left module and a right module, you can tensor them together. Okay. And here, what I want to do is I don't want to take the ordinary tensor product. I want to take the completed tensor product. Okay. This is a functor from left modules times right modules to chain complexes. Um, if I took the ordinary tensor product, I would run into the issue that basically any, any kind of notion of homological algebra, which you try to do with, um, which you try to do with, um, uh, with curved algebras over a field gives you the answer to zero, unless you complete, unless you do the correct, uh, unless you do the correct thing with respect to the, to the, to the, to the Novikov variable. So, it, you know, yeah, I could, I could, I could tell this whole story without completing, but then in that case, I really would be telling the story about the zero, about the, about the answer zero the whole time. And that would not be interesting. So the, the thing that you want to do is you want to complete. But you're not working over a local ring, right? You're working over a field. Well, no, and I didn't say, I said, well, okay, there's two ways to think about it. I usually think about, I mean, this is kind of sloppy on my part. I tend to think about working, working, working with this filtered algebra is the same thing as working over the Novikov ring. But of course, the other thing to do is you need can work over the Novikov field and just complete everything. So that's I'm allowing myself to go back and forth between the two the two perspectives. Is that okay, Barish? Yeah. Okay. So so now um, now the, the main thing is that there is a natural map uh, from this tensor product from M tensor the dual to the space of maps from M to itself. Okay. And now I come to the main definition, and this is kind of a definition that maybe some people, um, you know, with the, you know, more algebraically minded people may have seen before uh, in a different context, basically without the completion, which is that I want to define M to be topologically dualizable. And here topological means with that, that I take into account the completion. I take into account the filtration. If the identity, which is an element which is, well, the, I, you know, again, I said that the category of left modules is just a normal category. There's nothing wrong with it. So therefore there's an identity element in the cohomology. Uh, if this identity element, when you pass, once you pass the cohomology lies in the image, in the image of what? In the image of uh, this, uh, this uh, evaluation. Okay. So, so Mohammed, when you write CHA, you mean like pro-chain complexes, that category? Um, Sorry, give me one second. Um, I, I think I can, uh, no, well, somehow, I don't think we need to be that careful here. You can take the category of chain complexes, you can just complete. So I, I take a chain complex and I'm just gonna complete the chain complex and that's again a chain complex. And at the level at which I'm working, in fact, for these results, you don't need to, um, to kind of work with the, you know, the pro-completion of chain complexes. Like you don't need to work with the tower, you can just, but the yes. maps, but the maps between these things, you do require some respect of the filtration, right? But you see, that was that's something that that's built in. What I'm trying to say is that um, the I built in the fact that M was filtered, okay, and therefore the dual was filtered, <laughs> and therefore there is this evaluation map which respects filtrations. Yes, but, but but this map in the category of chain complexes is a map that respects those filtrations. Right. So okay, that, that's perfect. yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying you don't. I don't have to put that as an extra assumption. This is a property of the construction. Thank you. No problem. Um, so okay. So that's that's the definition. Okay. And right, can, I, can I ask one more question? Yes. Yes. So should I think of? I mean, naively, but I don't know a way of meaning making this meaningful. This seems to say something like identity of m factors through the diagonal, which of course is nonsense. But is there any? So, so the, 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 yeah. So the, the first intuition um, that that one should have is to drop all the completions from the story, and work with A being uh, a field, okay. And then you realize that this condition is just the condition. That is what the, all that's happening here. And I, maybe I should have given myself some room. So, yeah, there's. I, the need, I, we need to. I, I, I guess I need to add a button to this special bar that is create an extra page. Uh, <laughs> Um, there you go. Okay. So, um, the, 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 again, the, the thing for the algebraic, so, so, yeah, thing from the people who are not algebraic minded is that you should imagine that A is K, is the field, and we're doing no completion. 
Okay. And then this condition, well, M, what is M? M is basically a vector space. And then this hom over A from M delta, this is basically just M dual, or let's not even call it M. Let's call M equals V because, because we're used to vector spaces being V. And this is now the statement that V dual tensor V maps to hom from V to V. Okay. And this is the, the, the criterion for v, v being finite dimensional. Right. So this is, that's what's happening. We take this criterion for being finite dimensional. You can implement it with arbitrary algebras and you basically get a notion, you, you, get, you get essentially the notion of being perfect. But because we're using topology, because we're using these filtered objects, we need to be more careful and we don't take the usual tensor product, we take the completed tensor product. Denis, is that, is that satisfactory? Yes, thank you very much. Okay, and now the first, and then there's an exercise. Um, and it's, 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 not, it's basically an exercise in knowing what all the definitions that I, I mean, I, I, I mean I'm, this talk is going a little bit fast, I apologize, but it basically in, in, in going through the definitions of a curved algebra, a curved module, you know, morphisms of curved modules, tensor products of curved modules. I've used all these notions of left and right modules, completed tensor product. You go through this exercise and, and you go through all these notions and you add to them understanding what is this equation that uh, Fukaya or Otanono wrote for a bounding cochain. And when you do that, you realize that if you have a bounding cochain, um, that's this element here. If you have a bounding cushion, of course, that's not an arbitrary element. It's an element satisfying an equation. Then you can define a left module okay, explicitly via this formula. And again, this formula, it doesn't sometimes matter what it is, but if you're used to bounding cochains, you know that the, what you do is you're supposed to insert the bounding cochain everywhere. Okay? That's how you produce the, the algebra. Uh, but in, in you know, when the, the, the kind of this deformed algebra. But in terms of this module, what you do is you basically only insert it where the module lives. So the idea here is that this, um, this is the variable, which is the module, and these are the variables which are in A. So this, this is A, and this is the module. Okay. And what you do is you just take where that, wherever that module is and you just expand it, expand it to the right uh, by inserting a bunch of copies of B. And so in this way, you get, you get somehow an embedding of uh, this, uh, you know, you can make actually a category, but a category of all bounding cochains on the, uh, uh, on, on the algebra A. Basically, you know, if you, if you take a Lagrangian, I'm gonna, so I have to talk about Lagrangians so that I don't so know talk about, and you form this curved A infinity algebra, which is its Fleur theory. Okay? There may be many bounding cochains. And there is a category whose objects are those bounding cochains and whose morphisms are Fleur theory between the Lagrangian with one bounding cochain and the Lagrangian with another bounding cochain. Okay, so that is a piece of the Foucault category. And the way we sometimes speak in, in, in symplectic topology is we say that this is the piece of the Foucault category that is supported on this Lagrangian. Okay, that's somehow you know, the, what, something we say, and it, it's a very reasonable thing to say. But what I want to, the way, what I'm trying to indicate in this talk is that we already know that this is not quite true, that there are in, in general more objects that are supported on this Lagrangian besides the ones that are just bounding coaching. And the reason we and the reason we know this is because we have examples of Lagrangians with, for example, non-trivial local systems. And those local systems then support bounding cochains when the trivial bounding system doesn't, the trivial local system doesn't. Okay. Now if the system is local system is rank one, it's not a big deal. You can kind of get there by the bounding cochain. As long as you make the bounding cochains big enough, whatever that means, big enough with respect to the addict topology. Um, but but what we know there's these, these um, local systems that um, that are not of this name, the objects which are not of this nature. And that's somehow uh, and, and somehow what I'm trying to say is that the, this this uh, this notion of topologically dualizable is in some sense the end point of this story. If you try to think about what are all possible, you know, things that you could build that from this Lagrangian, and these would be things which have some kind of finiteness properties. Okay, again, you know, there's some work. I mean, 
on using uh, infinite rank local systems and things which are very, very big, that's like, you know, you know, uh, the quasi coherent sheaves, let's say, or O modules. I mean, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not talking about that. These are the objects that look kind of like coherent sheaves. They're, they're kind of, they're finite, again, in some sense. They're, they're small, again, which can be made in the technical sense. And they are supported on A. And that leads me to the to the to the kind of the question, which is oh, so again, this is I'm just making the same point here that you can do the more general thing. You can um, so I was taught I said something about you can take a Lagrangian, you can take a local system, you can build a build something like a bounding cochain, which is more complicated than just rank one thing, and you can also do the same thing algebraically. You can take A, which again is not a module over A, but let's call it for now a curved module. Okay, there's some. Thing, which is category of curve module. It's like a bad place to work. It's a curved A infinity category, but it's something you can just, you know, think of it as some kind of black, dirty pool from which you're trying to pull out some shiny, shiny pieces of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of diamonds. Uh, but from in there, you can try to form extensions. You can form extensions of curved modules, extensions of copies of A. And then once you form this extension, you know, you can maybe take a sum end, but let's not worry too much about that. You can take a bounding cochain on this. And you can do this in exactly the same way you formulate the notion of bounding cochain on just A itself. And what I'm trying to say is that these, again, will give you topologically dualizable objects, um, topologically dualizable modules um, in, this, in the sense that I just introduced. Okay? Now, if you don't have curvature, and if you didn't have this tensor product, if this completion in the tensor product, there is basically a theorem that says that all topological, all dualizable modules over an algebra, over an A infinity algebra, are obtained by this procedure. You, you can obtain them by, you can, you can form some kind of resolution and then take a sum end. It's some kind of extension and then take a sum. End. Okay? And the proof, you know, you go through the proof. Well, the proof uses essentially at some point that if you take an element, um, so let me just remind you what this, what the criterion was. The criterion, I can just do it here. The criterion was that, if, I'm gonna do it here with this V, who cares about the, about, uh, so the, 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 the proof is basically that you have something here, it goes to harm V tensor V, here there is the identity, okay? And because this is a tensor product, and if you have an element tau that goes to the identity, now normally you take a tensor product kind of, we're taking tensor product over A. I like to model that using the bar model. If you model it using the bar model, you see that you only use finitely many steps. Okay? You, you, there, you don't have to go arbitrarily far in the, in the bar complex to find an element that hits the identity if the identity is hit by some element. But when you complete, that's not as clear. And so that's why I'm saying it is not clear to, I currently expect, even though maybe somehow somebody may correct me in the future, um, that, that there should be some topological dualizable, some topologically dualizable module, which are not obtained just as some ends of these uh, extensions. Okay. So, so this is the, this is the, this is a notion and I, I'm claiming that this is a good notion. And part of the reason that I'm claiming that this is a good notion is the next part of the talk. So maybe I should just pause for a second and see if there's any questions. Okay, there's no questions. So the next part of the talk is going to be about the generation. So this is kind of um, the, the, the idea that we should be able to identify some Lagrangians and that these Lagrangians should somehow know everything about the Fukai category. So I, you know, I put here, um, yeah, so the, the specific version that, that I'm interested in is, um, is the case of closed, of closed uh, symplectic manifold. So this is something I worked on with uh, Fukai Ono in 2012. And, uh, you know, we have a manuscript written <clears throat> and the manuscript has still not been released. Um, so I put question mark, question mark in the hope that sometime in th this century, the manuscript will be released. Um, but let me formulate the main result. The main result is that we're going to consider a closed Lagrangian in some symplectic manifold. And uh, let's call the closed Lagrangian R. And what I have in mind here is that R is going to mean reference Lagrangian. Okay. 
This is going to be our reference Lagrangian, and everything else is relative to it. So, so we have a closed Lagrangian, and let's say it has a bounding coaching. Okay. Then let's consider this map that I was just talking about. Oh, no, that's not a map. This map that over here, which is called the open closed map. So this is a map from Hochschild homology of this Lagrangian, of this of the Fleur algebra of this Lagrangian with this bounding co-chain. So I just put the bounding co-chain there to quantum cohomology of X. So I maybe we'll draw some pictures later, but for now I'll just assume that you know, you're okay with Hochschild homology. Uh, this map looks like this. Hochschild homology is, you should think of it as being generated by, um, so uh, Hochschild homology, you should think of Hochschild homology uh, as basically you put um, the elements of your algebra around a circle And you construct and you construct some chain complex where you uh, take some differential and differential is associated to multiplying uh, nearby elements, successive elements. Okay, so this open closed map is the key idea of it is that you then you take the circle and you fill it into a disk. And when you fill it into a disk, you can assume that you put in some kind of marker in the middle. And in this marker in the middle, you're going to put quantum cohomology. So you're going to put cycles. So this is the open closed map for me. Hochschild homology to quantum cohomology. And uh, the statement is that if the identity class in quantum cohomology, let me remind you, quantum cohomology of a closed manifold is as a vector space, the same as ordinary cohomology. If the identity lies in the image of this map, then the Foucault category is smooth and the Foucault category has generator. In fact, to be precise, say split generator, which is this Lagrangian R with this bounding cochain B. And what that means is basically every other Lagrangian can be obtained in finitely many, uh, you know, by taking extensions of this object, finite, finite extensions of this object, and then passing to a sum in. So, so as I said before, one of, the, one of the things that's annoying with this result is that it's not too difficult to come up with examples where the Foucault category remains smooth when you deform, but R's, but R, this, this Lagrangian becomes obstructed. And again, what it means here is that it doesn't support any bounding cochain. You can't just correct the bounding cochain to, to handle this situation. And so what I want to do is have has kind of some formulation of what it means to generate the Foucault category, which does not rely on the choice of bounding cochain. Okay? And ideally it would be a, a, a really kind of a formulation that generalizes this one in the sense that if you have a bounding cochain, you can specialize. Uh, you can kind of use the, the machine uh, to recover this result. And if you don't have a bounding cochain, you get a slightly different result. So it can't quite be the same thing because if you don't have a bounding cochain, then you, you, you can't say that you have a generator because you don't have an object yet. And the, the um, so, so what's, what could you do? Well, somehow the, the, the definition uses this kind of Hochschild homology, but uh, if you try to do Hochschild homology um, of this, um, this algebra of this curved algebra, um, which in which we don't have the bounding co-chain, you're just going to get zero. But this is observed by many people. Um, and I think it's written, for example, in this uh, paper of Calderaro and two, I think. But, but I, don't, I, you know, I think somehow this certainly was like a folk, for folklore result, but this is a specific place where you can find it. But again, um, you, we, we, know, we, we don't have just the curved algebra, cur curved a infinity algebra, we have a filtration. Okay? And using the filtration, you can complete. You can complete the cyclic bar complex. You can take this, instead of taking finite sums um, of elements that are ordered around a circle, you can take arbitrary infinite sums. Well, you can take infinite sums uh, of elements that are ordered around a circle as long as those sums converge in respect to some adic topology. So basically as long as the the, the, the norm of them, let's do it like this, the norm of them goes to zero. Okay. And it's not too difficult to show that the open closed map extends to this group. And why is that? Well, the open closed map, um, you know, it's, it's, it's some kind of count of holomorphic disks and uh, the holomorphic disks have a positive valuation. Okay, um, sorry, positive, uh, positive valuation and there's only finitely many of them. That may be that's the key point. There's only finitely many holomorphic disks below any given energy level, which means the contributions of the holomorphic disks are themselves going to go into the, the norm of them is itself going to go to zero. So when you take the sum, well, fortunately you're working in you know, some kind of attic setting, and it's not too hard. You have two two things that are going to zero. Their product is also going to zero. 
Um, so it converges. Basically, going, converging and going to zero is the same thing. Uh, so the sum converges. So, okay, so the open closed map extends. And now, um, you know, I can formulate this generalization of, uh, of this uh, result with uh, Fukaya Ota Ono. Uh, so this was done with Groman and Barol Gunesh. And um, again, this is, this is what I was referring to as, you know, but to, uh, not last summer, but the summer before we worked out what the picture should be, and now we need to write it up. But, so the statement is like this. So you, you take this complete completion, uh, completion of this uh, Hochschild group. My goodness. Um, uh, you take the completion of this uh, Hochschild group. Um, sorry. And you take the map from that to quantum cohomology. And the statement is that if the um, unit of quantum cohomology lies in the image of this map, then the unit of functor um, from the Foucault category back to the category of modules, and I'm sorry, there is a typo here, to the category of modules over this Fleur algebra. Now, in order to make this, uh, the, this, uh, this, uh, this unit of functors factors through the perfect, the topologically dualizable, sorry, uh, topologically dualizable modules. Okay, and moreover, it's fully faithful. Now, this last part of it being fully faithful is just some technicality. I mean, really, you should say it is an equivalence. Okay, well, it's an equivalence as long as you have made the Fukai category large enough. So, if you in your Fukai category you've done things the way that I'm suggesting, and you've defined your object of the Fukai category to be basically topologically dualizable modules over uh, the Fleur, uh, Fleur, algebra, Fleur algebra of each Lagrangian, <clears throat> then this will be just you know, automatically true because every such object, um, because the target of this category is already sitting inside the Foucault category, so you don't, have, you don't have a problem. But if you want a kind of a more traditional definition of the Foucault category, um, and you want to stick to that, then your formulation will be that this is fully faithful. This is fully faithful event. Um, and so, so this, this result, um, I don't think it's going to be that useful for studying a specific Lagrangian, a uh, specific kind of symplectic manifold. But if we are in some, some, situ some situation where we have, like for example, it's a family symplectic manifold and we're trying to deform, um, uh, deform the symplectic form and understand what happens when you deform the symplectic form, then this is a much more robust uh, framework to be working in to understand kind of what happens. And of course, you know, one, one thing that this talk uh, could go into, which is not at all, I mean, haven't at all worked out, is how to do this entire story kind of parametrically over a base, uh, with the idea that that base would be like something like second cohomology. Okay, so that's, th this is the, this is the first result um, that I want to mention. And then the, the and it is, of course, is a result about or closed symplectic manifolds, ordinary Lagrangians, uh, closed Lagrangians inside closed symplectic manifolds. Now you can imagine many generalizations of this. You can imagine, for example, working with you know non-compact Lagrangians or Yuval domains or something like that. Maybe you could study you know um, non-exact Lagrangians in in that setting. But uh, but what I want to talk about is somehow the original motivation for building all this machinery, uh, and that is to understand. Um, Kind of some kind of local to global picture uh, for Fukai categories. So before I move on to that, I should ask if there is any questions about this part. Yeah, or maybe uh, Mohammed, it's Maxim. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. So do you understand this? Your theorem one can imagine the following analogy. Suppose we have some closed um, projective algebraic variety, yeah, yep. and then the form form power series non-algebraic one, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and then uh, and then we got on a special fiber we get some generating object, yeah. Then yes. you said it's kind of end of our physical algebra genetic objects of form power series will be responsible for what will rest of coherent shifts on generic fiber if they exist. Yeah. Right, right. This yeah, is yeah, yeah. that's yeah. essentially yes, right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, this is yeah, this because, is the passage from the tensor product to the completed tensor product. This is yeah. intuitively what's happening. Yeah, because essentially this generation is kind of algebraic varieties and non non generation it's non algebraic varieties kind of analogy. Yes, that's right. You want to, you want to read. Uh, yeah, and again, and the thing that I, that I keep thinking about is, you know, we want, you know, there's some kind of situations which are not too hard to access, where you have some kind of SYZ vibration and you have some Lagrangian, which is some kind of section. 
but, but the section is obstructed for some reason. Okay? And this is analogous to, for example, having some kind of a gerb on the B side. Okay? But the section is obstructed, but in some sense, if you take multiple copies of the section, okay, then that obstruction disappears. Okay? And this obstruction disappearing are these kind of more general objects that are supported on, you know, kind of geometrically on the A side, you can just think supported on the same Lagrangian, but, but the Fleur theory requires you to thicken a little bit. Uh, so that's that's indeed um, that's indeed one of the motivations. Okay, so let me move on uh, to the kind of third topic, which is, again is is the is the sometimes the origin of all this um, of all this extra homological algebra and kind of why we needed to do it. And uh, so the the, 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 top, the third topic is what is called local Fukai categories. So the the, in, the hope is to assemble the Fukai category of X from certain geometric pieces. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to take, so again, we all know this, that you cannot hope to take just a Fukaya category of each little piece and kind of glue together. You know, there's somehow, there's very special cases where things like that can work, like the Weinstein, uh, Weinstein manifolds. You know, now we have some formulation where you, it's all more or less that, but in a general symplectic manifold, that's not going to work. And you, you kind of, so, so what does it mean by assemble? Well, the main idea, and that this is kind of what I'm trying to reflect in the in the notation, is that you don't you're not trying to take the Fukai category of the pieces. Okay, what you're trying to do is trying to formulate. Oh, my pen stopped working. Uh, my pen stopped working. So, okay, what you're trying to do is you're trying to formulate the Fukai category with of X, the part of it that is supported in a in some kind of subset of X. Okay, so I'm going to take a compact. Compact uh, a compact subset of X, K, and I'm going to look at the Fukai category uh, of, um, of of X with support in K. Okay, so this is something that we can define, and I will say a few words about how it is defined. But what I want you to do is, well, first I want to explain kind of what examples do we have in mind, and maybe there's two of them. Okay? The first one is the kind of the original motivation that I had for thinking about this, which is that you take you take Lagrangian torus vibrations. You have X. It projects to some base Q, okay? That's, you know, with fibers of Lagrangian tori. And what you get is for each subset of, of Q, you can take the inverse image, okay? So now what you can look at is the Fukai category of X with support in the inverse image of this subset. And this, 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 this these subsets that you get via as inverse images, they're very special, okay? They, they have some kind of, you know, they have some kind of co-isotropic property to them. Now, if you do this in general, you know, for arbitrary sets, for every subsets of K, things get a little bit messy. I mean, you can try to do it, but uh, but but the homological algebra, the, the algebra, the Fleur algebras that you end up getting are, you know, a little bit like something like, you know, you take analytic functions on a non-convex domains in higher dimension, and you try to do some kind of derived, uh, you know, kind of derived Holmes in that setting. So it's better to just work with the convex hull. Okay. So it's another way to say it's better to work with just convex subsets of Q. And here convexity is phrased in terms of this Lagrangian torus vibration. You know, that, that introduce, induces an affine structure on the base. And then you can look at things which are convex. So now one of the, okay, so I wrote, this gives a stack on Q. But of course, this is not proved. But the whole point is to prove this, is to prove that you, if you look at these localized Fukai categories, associated to a cover of the base of a Lagrangian torus vibration, then these categories glue, okay? And then there's no, it's not just that there is a category for every subset. It's not just that there is a restriction map for every inclusion. It's in fact that if you take two things on here, on here, and the two subsets, and they overlap, you might have an isomorphism over the intersection, then you can extend this to something over the whole thing. So that's, um, that's the, the, the scheme for um, a local to global proof of homological mirror symmetry in the presence of these uh, SYZ vibrations. But you know, for the purpose of this conference, there is another place where uh, these, these um, categories are relevant, which is that if you were to take a blow up, you take, a, you take some symplectic manifold, you take a submanifold, you blow up along a symplectic, symplectic submanifold. So if you assume that the blow up parameter is sufficiently small, and here what I'm referring to is the fact that in symplectic topology, when you blow up, um, you know, you have to decide how big is the blow up going to be. So on, on, on the, you know, on the mirror side, in Kähler geometry, you have to decide what is the Kähler 
format you're going to pick on this blog. So depending on the size of the exceptional fibers. So if the exceptional fibers are very small, then the expectation, and somehow there is good motivation from this from geometry, is that you can find, you can, if the, you can pick a neighborhood of this subset. So let's call this n, n of the exceptional divisor. Well, okay, okay there's some typo, but okay. We say the neighborhood n, so that the Foucault category decomposes into two pieces. The Foucault category of y would support in this neighborhood, and the Foucault category would support in the complement. Okay? And this is really some kind of actual decomposition, not a semi not a semi-orthogonal decomposition, okay? And this, now, now once, you've, once you've done this, you know, which we, this is something that one can prove, and I, I believe we'll, you know, we'll be able to just prove it as part of our general machinery. And this is related to, to this, uh, to work of, um, um, uh, um, sorry, um, to, to work and uh, Fordward and, and, his, uh, and his collaborators. Um, but what, what, what want to, the way I want to think about it is that first you establish this decomposition, then you try to compute what each of these pieces are. Okay? And the idea is supposed to be that the Foucault cat, just like in, uh, in Orloff's uh, semi-orthogonal decomposition associated to blobs, um, the Foucault category associated to the neighborhood of the exceptional divisor is related to the Foucault category of the exceptional of the blow up locus and the Foucault category of projective space. Uh, no, no, and, well, yes, and the Foucault category of projective space, which is the fibers. Um, whereas the, 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 the right-hand side, the, Foucault, the other piece, the Foucault category of the, which support in the complement kind of doesn't change or only changes up to deformation, um, up to some kind of well-controlled well deformation. So this is kind of, yeah. yes. Oh, 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 sorry, Mohammed, I really object to the using of the, the um, kind of sum uh, or, or, or plus the summation of okay. the Foucault categories because Foucault categories for varieties from non-trivial first chain class are really uh, labeled by some numbers which eigenvalues of uh, kind of right. zero and right. they do not you cannot take direct sum of them you cannot make homes between them <laughs> yeah so uh, it's okay 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 so it's I, really I, disjoint union i say it's a joint fine, union. fine fine i i i understand uh, i understand the, the objection um Yes, that's, uh, that's um, okay. So if we if we if we take the decomposition into um, into um, into um, the potential values um, as being this, this decomposition into pieces, indeed, we expect that the that the potential values for for the Foucault category of Y for the part supported on on this uh, exceptional locus is going to be different from the ones that we see outside. Indeed, okay. So, so that's that's kind of the motivation. That's where one, how one would like to use these this machinery. But first, one needs a definition. Okay, and this is so. I mean, I have maybe ten minutes uh, left if I leave time for questions, um, and it, well, maybe it's fifteen minutes if we take the whole time. There is, I mean, I'm not going to give the whole the, the definition today. This is a kind of you know, this took us a whole summer. Um, but 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 I want to give some idea for the definition. Okay, so the definition goes. Our definition goes like this. We start with the Foucault category of X, okay? And, but we start with the curved version of it. And I'm gonna call that A of X, okay? I like to use F for what you do, for what you get after getting rid of the curve, what you get after you're getting rid of the curvature. So either we mean bounding cochains or we mean these kind of, um, the good kind of modules that I was talking about. But A should mean just the curved one. And now, um, if you take, a subset of, uh, of X, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a bimodule okay, over A. And as I told you before, the category of bimodules over a curved algebra is perfectly reasonable category. Is a perfectly reasonable category. It's well behaved. Okay. Which bimodule am I going to get? Well, the thing that you can do is that if you have, if you um, do Fleur theory, and now I'm really suffering because my I'm in some kind of half crashed mode. Or my pen doesn't write, doesn't work, so I can't write anything. So if you do Fleur theory, so you have to use my hands. So you can you do Fleur theory of Lagrangian or another Lagrangian, okay? That gives you a group. But if you have a Hamiltonian, if you have a function on M, what you can do is you can take one of the two Lagrangians and you can move it by isotopy, by the Hamilton, associated Hamiltonian isotope. In fact, if you just get a symplectomorphism, you get a, okay, you can move one Lagrangian. And if you move one Lagrangian by a symplectomorphism, you get some group, which is basically the Fleur group of the original Lagrangian with the, with the image of the second one under the symplectomorphism. And this Fleur group is naturally a bimodule because you can act on the left 
by the Fleur theory of Lagrangian that hasn't moved, and act on the right by the Fleur theory of the Lagrangian that has moved, again, to which you apply the symplectomorphism. So this would be great. It would be great if we could associate to every subset of X a symplectomorphism. Okay? But that's not, that doesn't work. This, there's no such thing you can do that's canonical. But what you can do is you can, in the limit, associate a family of, of symplectomorphisms. And they come, they're actually Hamiltonian symplectomorphisms. They come from functions. They come from functions which are you know, less than or equal to zero on K and grow and come, are, are allowed to be arbitrary outside of K. And you can take the system and you can direct it. You can direct it by increasing, by going up. And here, the fact that the system has to be directed is related to the fact that we're working over the Novi covering and that we need to keep track of actions. The value of the function is related to the action um, or the norm of the elements of the Fleur group. In the system, there is, a, there is kind of a terminal one. There's a terminal function, which of course is not smooth. And that's the delta function of the complement. Well, yeah, it's the function which is infinity outside and zero inside k. And I'm just going to pretend that this is a reasonable function and we can do Fleur theory with this function. Okay? And of course, the, the reality is that this is not what you do, that you form a certain co-limit um, of, you know, you take a co-limit of Fleur groups, so that gives you a co-limit of bimodules. And everything I'm going to say later, I'm going to come from the next two slides, you have to correct it. You have to build Whatever I'm going to say, you can build some algebra structure. Well, you have to build that algebra structure on this co-limit. And you can imagine there is some, um, you know, not, let's say, thorny issues of homological algebra uh, to get right in this context. Okay. But anyway, so there is this, this bimodule associated to the delta function of the complement of K. And this bimodule is multiplicative. So what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that if you take some Hamiltonian H1 and some Hamiltonian H2, okay, then up to allowing, uh, yeah. then there is a natural way to map the, 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 the tensor product of the bimodules associated to H1 and H2 to the bimodule associated to their sum, H1 plus H2. Okay? There's this natural map. It comes from a pair of pants. A pair of pants where you put H1 here, H2, H1 at the top of the pair of pants and H1 plus H1, H2 at the kind of the two, whatever, where you put your legs. Um, and, um, and H1 plus H2, where you put your torso. And that's a product, okay? But my, my Hamiltonian, my delta function, it has the property that it's sum with itself is itself, okay? So there is a map from the FLURG, from the diagonal, from the bimodule associated to this Hamiltonian tensor itself back to the original thing. And of course, because we're doing FLUR theory, this map is not associative, but it doesn't matter. FLUR theory gives you everything that you need uh, and it gives you the fact that this is, in fact, this, this is the first product of an A infinity algebra, of an A infinity structure. And now I use the specific, you know, what does this mean? You know, what it, the way to formulate it is to remember that the category of bimodules is monoidal. Okay? There is a notion of a tensor product of bimodules. And because it is monoidal, you can formulate what it means to be an algebra object in this category something with a tensor product to itself. And in fact, you can actually, actually formulate what it means to be a, an A infinity algebra object. And that's the statement. The statement is associated to every compact subset of a closed symplectic manifold is an A infinity algebra object of the uh, category of bimod in the category of bimodules over the Fukai category of the whole space. Okay? And everything that you, you're going to do, everything that we're going to do uh, when we're studying a local Fukai category, it basically emanates from this starting point. Okay. So what that means in particular, and I just want to stress this point, is that we are not going to construct a curved A infinity algebra associated to the local, to the local, um, local Fleur theory. And in some sense, you really don't want to. I mean, you could try, you could try really hard, and if you did, it wouldn't be a great idea. Why is that? Well, the reason is that if you start with the Fukai category of the whole space, Fukai Oda Ono had this idea that you look at, uh, that you look at um, bounding cochains. And if you try to think really hard about what is required for the theory of bounding cochains to be really well behaved, for you to understand how to do homological transfer, you, you understand that at some point they had to use this condition, which is the gapped condition. Okay? So, so again, what I want to say is like the, the gapped condition is what makes 
the theory of bounding cochains reasonable on curved algebras. But the algebras that will be produced uh, in local Fleur theory are not gapped in any, you know, in any well, maybe there is some sense we have not discovered yet in which they're gapped, but certainly not in any naive sense. So gappedness means that somehow that there, is a, there is a certain, there's a minimal amount of, um, of energy that any operation has, okay? And so that, kind, that assumption allows you to run some inductive arguments, okay? And here, because this Hamilton, basically have it, something having to do with the, with the dynamics of the, the Hamiltonian dynamics of a delta function or something approximating a delta function um, on the complement of K, that kind of bound, that kind of estimate just completely disappears. You know, you can have, you know, an orbit, you can have a chord, you know, uh, separated by only epsilon from a, another chord. And then later up, you, later on, you see another chord separated by epsilon over two from another. So there's no control of this nature. So, so that's some, some sense one of the reasons why um, the idea of trying to, to, to use bounding cochains in local Fleur theory is just not, a, you know, not, it, I don't see it as something that's going to go very well. But on the other hand, if you formulate everything in terms of this bimodule, and now we have this, aim, this, this uh, algebra object in the category of bimodules, you can construct a category of modules over it, just like you can construct a category of modules over an infinity algebra. So this is kind of some kind of some kind of exercise. The exercise is like this. I give you an algebra. I look at its category by modules. I find an algebra object in the category of bimodules. And the exercise is formulate what it means to be a module over this algebra object. And it's it's not very difficult. It basically says, well, it needs to be a module over the original algebra. And in addition, it has an action by the bimodule. So that's basically what it is. So this is. Um, that's this uh, category mod AK that I'm referring to here. And since everything is living in this formal world where, you know, to define things being finite, everything being finite is just defined in terms of, well, you look at the left module and the right modules and the pairing between them and chain complexes, you can formulate just as well what it means to be a perfect or again, topologically dualizable by module over, by module over this object. So great. So that's that's this. Uh, so this is now our notion of um, of the Fukaya category um, of local Fukaya category of the subset. It is the category of uh, topologically dualizable modules over the bimodule that is associated to the Fleur theory of this subset. So you can do the same thing. You can do the same thing in the closed sector. Uh, in the closed sector. Uh, you can you have something which is called the local symplectic cohomology. So the way you get it is you look at from maybe from the perspective of Fukai categories is you look at x times x. You look at the diagonal embedded in there, and you apply this machine to the diagonal. You take the self homs of the diagonal, but not not in the Fukai category, but in this localized Fukai category. So there, there, there's this local, the group is called symplectic cohomology because I mean, it could be called local quantum cohomology, but that name is, as far as I know, already taken. And also it's not a great name because somehow quantum cohomology has all this extra structure. You know, it's, um, you know, it's like, it's like this D module uh, that, that quantum cohomology has, and we, this does not exist locally. But this really requires, this is something that requires working globally. So I think it's, it's calling it symplectic cohomology is a reasonable name. Uh, and it distinguishes it from, from the fact that it, it doesn't have some of the structure that quantum cohomology has. And um, so the, the, there's this local group and there's an open closed map exactly like before, because we can take Hochschild homology of, um, of modules um, of, of this bi, of this bimodule um, and that maps to local symplectic cohomology. Okay, so now I can finally state this, um, this formulation of this result with um, Groman and Varugonesh, which again, not written yet. Um, and it's, it's exactly what you'd expect from what I said before, okay? which is that if you uh, take a Lagrangian um, and you consider, you know, not the, you know, not, not this whole A, which is A of X, which is all the curved, you know, the entire curve of the category, but just this single Lagrangian R, okay? And you uh, take the, um, the, the, the open closed map, but you restrict it to, again, the single Lagrangian and you do it locally by in K, then if this open closed map has one in its image, okay, if the unit in, um, in symplectic cohomology uh, lies in the image of, um, 
of this completed Hochschild homology group, then the map from the local Fukai category. And again, here what I want to say is that it, you know, whatever your version of the local Fukai category is going to be, but the one we're going to use is the one that I said that I said before, which is it's going to be to topologically dualizable modules over over AFK. So anything that you could construct in some sense, you know, finitely up to this completion process uh, from um, from a um, from from a closed Lagrangian. Okay, any such object that you could construct, um, it can be you know once once uh, so uh, so th those are the objects of the Fukai category would support on would support on K, and you can map that to the category of modules over this curved algebra associated to R. And that map is a fully faithful embedding. And again, it's a fully faithful embedding whose image is, again, the topologically dualizable modules. And if you define things correctly, uh, that map is actually just an equivalence. And anything you would ever want to do, hum, you know, hum, any kind of homological question you would want to ask about the local Fukai category um, can, be, um, can be basically detected by this uh, reference Lagrangian, locally by this reference Lagrangian. So um, I think so. I am supposed to be uh, self-chairing. So I think this is a, this is the place. No, I'm where... here. It's okay. Oh, okay. So well, okay. I'm not self-chairing, but uh, still, the chair should tell me that I have uh, two minutes. So, but I yes, think I, I should stop. I'm going to stop for questions. And while I'm stopping for questions, I'm going to see if if uh, uh, if um, stopping sh screen sharing fixes my problems with my pen, which could be helpful to answer questions. So anyway, thank you for your attention. Okay, well, let's thank Mohammed. And while he's trying to fix the technical problem, uh, are there any questions? Well, this is Hochschild homology, Hochschild homology with coefficients in this bimodule NK. No, it is not. Um, yeah, so I really have, I, I, I'm, I cannot write. So this Hochschild homology is probably related to something that Maxime has thought and talked about when, when discussing. Um, you know, he's given some talks about, um, you know, Calabia structures and things like that. But what I want to say is that the, 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 yeah, if I could draw, so how, how am I, I'm unable to draw and my pen doesn't work. Uh, it's kind of a hilarious situation. Um, let me try something crazy. I'm going to try the whiteboard. Maybe this will, yes, great. Okay, this is the worst thing ever, but I can live with it. Um, so, so, so what is this Hochschild homology? Well, so take this circle, okay? And now we have some bimodule and let's call this bimodule P. And what I want to have, okay? And we we'll also have some algebra. So what we need to have is some kind of like thick marks associated to P, okay? And thin marks associated to A. So first I'm doing the ones for P. I feel like this completely primitive technology, but. Uh, okay, so yes. this is like a P, yes, Maxime, you want to say something? technology, you can just use usual pen, usual paper, and then put your camera on. Yeah, 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 but I, I basically, li I live in New York City, this is like my, 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 my office, my, my office, this is my daughter's bedroom, it's basically like a cave, there's no light here. Um, okay, so, but anyway, this is kind of acceptable, I think, people can just imagine what I'm trying to say. So, so you, you put a bunch of P's around, as many as you want, and that's, the P is the bimodule. And then uh, between them, there are as many copies of A as you want, right? And so, so, so now you can, you can kind of imagine what's going on. You have these elements and um, clearly the A's act on the P's and that's one type of differential. But also I told you, P is not just an arbitrary bimodule, it is equipped with a map. It's an algebra object. So that we have some kind of map like this, P, P, you know, P, P in, and then here P out, right? But this map, we, it's, it's, th this would be just like a, a map of vector spaces. It's actually a map of bimodules. So in fact, this is what we have, a bunch of maps like this. So, so that's, that's basically what the complex looks like. You, look at, you take a direct sum of things that basically look like P tensor over A with P, okay? But arranged around the circle, and you equip that with the obvious differential that P tensor A over P has. In fact, you, you kind of better use that because A is curved, remember? So there's somewhere in there the curvature of A is appearing. But you know, from like the from the high perspective, you just don't see it. 
you just feed that all into the differential on p tensor over a with p. It's not something you, you can encounter. But then also you have these maps from p tensor over a with p to p. That's, 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 the, that's the bimodule structure. That's the monoidal structure on the category of bimodules. So this is what I mean by the Hochschild homology of, uh, of this, uh, this bimodule. So it's, 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 it's of this algebra object in the category of bimodules. Is that satisfactory, Barish? Yes. So somehow unitality of this algebra would be like dualizing with it or? No, unitality is evil. Um, and in some sense, we just don't, we don't worry about it. Okay, because why do you need to prove unitality? I mean, if you think, if you think, if you think about f cubed, you think about why do you need, why do they ever need to prove unitality? And then you realize they only need, they need to prove unitality because they are trying to formulate the notion of a weak bounding cochain. If you try to think about, so to formulate the notion of a weak, weak bounding cochain, you need to write the formula, not sum of mu k, um, you know, you, you don't write the formula sum of mu k uh, equals zero, but instead you write the formula sum of mu k um, equals the unit. So you need to have a unit to write this. But in this world, you don't need that anymore. Okay, you can, I mean, I didn't do it, but I could have talked about modules uh, with curvature, you know, the identity. This is something that's completely reasonable. Okay? It doesn't require unitality of anything. Okay? You can just formulate, you know, modules with potential, let's call it modules with potential value lambda. Okay, this is a notion that does not require for the algebra to be unital. And then perfect modules with potential value lambda and so on and so forth. So, you know, Unitality kind of drops out of the of this of this part of the story. Now, you know, there's other parts of the story where you maybe do want unitality. You know, I don't. You know, if you want to understand the relationship between holomorphic disks and churn simons and you know some formulas involving graphs, you know, that's that's not the purview of this talk. But for the purpose of you know for categories, you know, uh, this formalism allows you to get rid of it. Maybe I have a question. Yeah, uh, just on the center, what is going on? Suppose we have a XYZ vibration, yeah? Uh, yes. And on the base, you get some co compact subset, yeah? Then it gives pullback a compact subset in your symplectic manifold. Yeah. Uh, um, like, let's say, tube domain, yeah? Uh, what will be the answer for this? Uh, whatever, this oh, yes. So, 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 so that, that's the, so if the, if the, if the, basically, categories of modules over an affinoid ring. Okay, so if you um, if you if you have um, this this is something this is something that's going to be that's going to be the outcome of what you're going to prove that if you take a Lagrangian torus vibration over some base and let me for the simplest thing take just a compact subset of the smooth part away from the discriminant locus, then the smooth part that's just a smooth torus vibration. So what you want to do, what you can do, is associate to it a completion of the Laurent polynomials, and the machinery will prove that. The category, category of this whole thing with support on the subset is the same as the category of modules over, I'm sorry, well, a coherent sheaves, a DG enhancement of coherent sheaves um, on this on this affinoid thing. And, and this analog of quantum homology will be uh, kind of forms on this guy, uh, guy. it will be infinite dimensional, yeah. Yes. Or if it's called twice, it will be finite dimensional, yeah. That's exactly right. That's exactly why I said, you know, we can call it quantum cohomology if people want to, but I think the best way to call it is you, let's use another name. Hochschild homology. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. So this Hochschild homology group that you will get is this, which again, symplectically is this symplectic cohomology group. It's basically, you know, um, polyvector fields. You know, it's infinite dimensional, different, yeah. Uh, but if it's quantized, for example, yeah, you can get, get after Fukai K could be quantum algebra, then it will be much smaller. It will be really homology with respect to Right, 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 yes. right. It depends, so it depends, yeah. That, that depends. I mean, so if you turn on some kind of deformation of the symplectic form, that's a different story. But I think if you really just take a Lagrangian torus vibration in some kind of, in, as a piece of some SYZ, of some Calabia SYZ, you have to assume that we have a Calabia SYZ thing, then I expect that it's going to be this huge infinite dimensional thing. And then yeah, quantization is a different story. Hi, can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, is there any sort of, uh, do you think there's any sort of uh, restriction or induction type functors connecting these various categories together for different choices of K? 
Right, so what I said is, well, yes. So the point is, the, so there are, so, right. So, well, what can I say? Um, restriction, definitely. So if you take a compact subset and you take a subset that's inside of it, there is a restriction. So in fact, one of the things that we do and that's one of the things that is going to cause this project to take years and years, is that we construct this thing strictly functorially. Okay, so this is like an e we do something evil from the point of view of um, higher categories. You know, we literally construct some kind of a infinity category, you know, maybe DG category associated to every compact subset. For every inclusion, we construct a functor, and for every triple of inclusions, the compositions agree up to natural isomorphism, but not uh, isomorphism, not some kind of higher stuff. Um, and you could say, you know, why? Why? I mean, basically the answer is that if we didn't do that, we would have to import a bunch of higher, uh, uh, you know, higher coherence uh, machinery and implement it fluid theoretically. And, you know, um, I'm getting old and it's hard for me to learn new things, something like that. Um, so, but anyway, so that restriction is a key part of the game. The, the, the maps in the other direction, the, I, in this context, in this generality, they only make sense uh, in the categories of modules. You can pull back modules, but you don't, you know, we, you, you know, if you're doing analytic geometry, you cannot push forward, you cannot, you cannot push forward, um, you cannot push forward uh, coherent sheaves. It just doesn't work. They're, they're in general quasi-coherence. It's, it's, it's not, uh, they're badly behaved. This is not, this is not as nice as, uh, as the algebraic one. Any more questions? And maybe still, <laughs> sorry for uh -huh. here. Yeah, I, I, you remember I had a kind of different uh, pro pro proposal to use skeletons, yeah, Lagrangian skeletons, and how do the speak talk? Can I yes. So, so yeah, so I think the, 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 okay, so here's the essential difference is the following. Everything here is built on the idea of starting with a global Lagrangian. You start with a Lagrangian that's nice and behaved, well behaved everywhere, and then you build Fleur theory from it. And I think these, you know, okay, so now your your point. If if I, if I try to kind of you know um, find the common like the, the meeting point of your approach and this approach, it would be something like this. And I think maybe this was suggested uh, by by Umut Varol Ganesh. It's that we could take the skeleton of the complement of a divisor, okay? And in that skeleton, the Lagrangians would, you know, the, the, the Lagrangian, which is kind of like, the Lagrangians dual to the skeleton, we can make them as, ni as nice Lagrangians all the way up to, this, up, to the, up to the divisor. And maybe when we get to divisor, we have some trouble, okay? So we, we can at least do, you know, we can make them nice Lagrangians almost everywhere, away from some code I mentioned two things. And I think that's the place where the two theories can be, can be compared and, um, you know, in some sense, you know, your approach ultimately was of the form. You start with the skeleton that you understand and you build everything from it via some sophisticated deformation theory, okay? more sophisticated than the usual one. And the way I see it is that that's computing these invariants. These are the invariants for which it's much more straightforward to prove, again, from the point of view of symplectic topologists, uh, that's, you know, the symplectomorphism group acts. Not just the, you know, the, the, you, know can, you can prove things like, you know, you know, you take the symplectomorphism group and you think of it as like a topological group and it acts on these categories. And the Hamiltonian diffeomorphism group, you know, it acts trivially. Sometimes you can trivialize that action. So this is the, this is the kind of play, this, this is the formalism that allows you to prove those kind of things. If you want to compute, um, you don't have answers in terms of generators and relations, then you're going to need some other tool. And this tool is probably, not going to be the one that you want for it. Uh, and that's where the ge geometry, like you work on a, you know, the complement of a divisor and you study a skeleton and you, you, know, you have this co-limit of uh, categories associated to the skeleton and then you somehow deform that, that should be compatible with this answer. No, I mean, it's, it's sort of a related question because now I'm confused. In this GPS story, uh, you start with uh, Ganatra, pardon, yes. you, you can start with an arbitrary, maybe singular Lagrangian subset, take its kind of Liouville neighborhood, and then take the uh, homotopy co-limit of some local things. So uh, 
is it the same? I mean, if I treat it just as as UK as a compact. So, so what I what I so here yes. Let me let me answer something which is not what you wanted me to answer, which is what if K was just a Lagrangian? Okay, I said there is some category that's associated to every compact subset. What if this K compact subset that we picked was just some Lagrangian? And the answer is in that case you can prove that this thing that we're being produced is being produced is a deformation of the category of um, of local systems. So what, I, what I'm doing is I'm taking the category of local systems and I'm using Fleur theory to produce some deformation of it. And so to the extent that I understand what, you know, I'm a little bit, you know, I find it a little bit tricky to think about an arbitrary singular Lagrangian subset. Uh, and, and I mean, it's not, what can I say, uh, Jan? I say it's, it's just, I'd have to do a little, some geometry before I understood why it is that it has a canonical Newville neighborhood. That's what I'm a little bit worried about. Yeah, but modulo this. Okay, so so modulo this thing. If I understood it, uh, then I, I expect, and I think this is, it's it's going to be slightly tricky to prove. Uh, so I don't want to suggest that this is easy, but I think it's reasonable to conjecture that the 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 local categories that we are constructing via these methods are deformations of the ones that you would get from the other point of view. But this difficulty is that our this version relies, as I, as I tried to stress, on having a global Lagrangian. You need, like, you know, the, the other method just says you can just construct this thing. You know, there's a stuff that's, so, like, in some sense, you, you take this neighborhood and you, in the neighborhood, if you find some nice Lagrangians, that's good enough. Uh, but to I, I you know to do Fleur theory with that is is very delicate, and I wouldn't want to do it yet. And maybe this is some project for the future, um, as to how to how to be really really related to approaches. But that's why kind of my current answer as to what is feasible uh, to compare the two approaches is really to, is to just take this take this subset to be the skeleton of the complement of a divisor, and then and then things are going to be are going to be kind of reasonably behaved. In fact, in that case, there's like a third approach. Um, which is this, the things that Kenji Fukaya has been doing uh, about, about basically about, about Fukaya categories and the complements of divisors. This is kind of partly motivated by his work with uh, Daimi uh, on Etiafler. So there, there's in some sense three different perspectives floating around here. Other questions? So let's thank the comment again. Thank you. And uh, let's take a break. Uh, we'll resume at four o'clock.